everyone, welcome to scrapbook.com. Here with me, Alexandra Stapleton Smith at the Hedgehog Hollow. And today we're working with that new LDRS release that I showed you in the last video. And we're gonna be making a project with that wonderful new cover die, which I just fell in love with. As soon as I saw it, you know when you have a project in mind and you just need to make it. So I thought, well, what could be better than making it here on video to share with you all. So I'm using the new Ranger alcohol pearls that I showed you in another scrapbook.com video. And we're gonna be using some Upo paper. So Upo paper is an acrylic paper. So you can't tear it or do anything like that with it because it's made out of plastic. It's pretty resistant to most things. You know, you can't you know, tear, but you can die cut. You can do all sorts of fun things with it afterwards. Um, and I've done lots of different techniques with it. I've made lots of videos with it. You can check all of those out on YouTube. But what we're gonna do today is just create a really fun background. Now, alcohol pearls are just like your regular alcohol inks. They're gonna react with your alcohol blending solution that we're going to be using. All the links to everything I'm using is in the video description for you. And we'll link them in the order of the video. So they're super easy to find too. But um, alcohol pearls have mica in them. So they're not like a mixative. Um, you don't have to use them at the end. You can use them as part of your project and you can mix them with regular alcohol inks too. Now today I'm just gonna stick with pearls because I'm in love with pearls. They're my new toy and I've been using them in lots of videos and lots of techniques and I'm just gonna exclusively use the pearls. And you can get them in multi-packs. When you first get them, you're gonna notice that there is the pearl pigment in the bottom here and then the rest of your alcohol inks. They have a silver ball inside. So you wanna give them a good shake to get them going and then they're gonna mix together. Now a lot of the colours I did give a shake before I started the video, so I don't need to do them all again. Um, but you're going to want to just give them a shake and then they're going to mix together nicely and you have a nice even colour to work with. So the first thing um, you can do, you can use your alcohol tool, the tool with the felt on, you can do direct to paper, you can do all sorts of different techniques. But this one today, I'm just going to take a piece of Upo paper and whilst we are going to cut it down, I'm going to use the whole piece and I'll explain a few reasons why. One is, first of all, then I can trim the piece out that I really like at the end of it. Also means I can die cut other pieces and I've got pieces to use later on. There's no point not using some of these pretty papers we're gonna get. Um, and then it gives me lots of options too. So I'm just gonna pop down some blending solution. And the reason I like putting blending solution down first is because we can um, get some really fun reactions, which is what you're gonna see happen. So it's harder to see on camera, but I can see some little puddles of blending solution on here. And I'm gonna start off with some intrigue which is, they also have some amazing names. And so what you see um, is that they dance, that mica kind of dances around and they all expand. So where I put it, they've now all kind of started to spider out. Then we're gonna go for some villainous. Now this is the purple and I have to say that the name and the color reminds me of the evil stepmother in Snow White. So where I don't have alcohol blending solution on this side, you'll see they're not spidering as much. You can put color inside of color. Alcohol inks react together and you'll get some really pretty effects. Now I'm gonna go in with some Tranquil. So I'm gonna throw some of that down. Now this side where I haven't got any blending solution, I'm now gonna put blending solution on top. And I'm gonna get a different effect on there. So you can really experiment with alcohol inks and you're gonna get different effects depending whether your alcohol blending solution goes on first or second. You can be generous or you can be stingy with it. Again, you're gonna get different effects depending on that. And you can also move your paper around. Don't be scared to just pick it up and just move it. Like this. Something else you can do, and I'm just gonna grab it out my drawer behind me, is you can take something like a computer blower, you can take compressed air and by blowing it around you help that evaporation process happen even faster and you can get ripples, you can make flowers, you can really play with alcohol inks. They're probably one of my favourite mediums to work with because every piece you do is going to be different. Every piece is going to have um, different intricacies in it. So now I can throw in yellow, which if I threw in yellow to these colors normally, you'd end up with some really muddy, weird kind of colors. But with alcohol inks, you're not gonna get that. 
you want to get some fun interactions. I'm going to throw some green in over here. But you'll notice that I made sure a lot of that colour was dry so that I didn't get too kind of muddy in here. Like this. I'm going to add some Celestial. And because I'm going to be doing a peekaboo technique with a cover die, I want some interesting peekaboos. I feel like I'm losing a little bit of my pink, so I'm going to grab some Enchanted, which is the light pink, and I'm going to fill that in down here. you notice it's just drops of colour, it's not huge amounts of colour. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of that Intrigue. There is also a red called Deception. And I don't know where my peekaboos are going to be, so it's really going to be potluck. Compressed air is fun because you're going to get an even more exaggerated effect than I'm getting with this here. There's something else fun that you can do is what you'll notice if you've ever worked with alcohol inks at the end, you can end up with some sticky areas. So some places where you kind of end up with thick alcohol, you can then just take some foil, a firmware foil works particularly well, and you can just lay that over the top and it will pick up the foil. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to allow this to dry, maybe for a minute or so, and you'll notice I have some white areas. I'm not concerned about that because again, it's a peekaboo, so you can not worry, but everything has an amazing shimmer because of that pearl. Normal alcohol inks don't have that shimmer, but as I say, you can mix. I could now throw in regular alcohol inks and pearl, and they're gonna mix, and some's gonna be shimmery, some's not. If I layer alcohol ink over the top of my pearl, it's gonna pick through some of that shimmer. But I really do have a really interesting piece that I've put together here. As I say, I just want this to dry for 30 seconds to a minute, and then I'm gonna show you that foil technique. So after that kind of minute, Places like this that are thick but sticky, you never really know where it's going to adhere. I'm just going to take a piece of Thermoweb foil and I'm going to lay it on top of my piece, just like this. Nothing else required. You can exacerbate this reaction by running it through a laminator at this point or your mink machine, something like that. You'll get even more adhesion by doing that, but this technique works absolutely fine too. And all I'm going to do is give it a really nice rub. You can just brayer over the top too if you want to, but a nice firm rub of your fingers I've found is absolutely fine. I don't get any more adhesion by brayering. And then I want to make sure it's nice and dry. And then we kind of wait. Sometimes you never really know how dry it is. Maybe I should have started at this end, it's a little bit drier. So I'm going to peel from this end, and so you can see, I'm going to do the same at this end because I didn't have a piece of foil that was as big as my Yupo, and then I'm going to show you where it's stuck. So again, just give it a nice, and you can really see by my piece of foil how much, this was a solid piece of foil, you can now see that pieces of foil are picked out. And you can reuse this foil over and over. I will reuse this tons and tons of times. And sometimes I kind of just go in and I just move it around as I, you know, my foil kind of gets more and more used. I just reuse it over and over. And so what I can do now, I'm just gonna pick this up. So I have foil that's picked up in here. Um, I have foil that's picked up, so I have to, let me move this closer. I have a big area of foil that's picked up in here. I have foil that's picked up in this top piece. And it's really, it depends what color of foil you use as to how um, much the foil picks up. But what it does is it gives you kind of a geode feel. It just gives you a little bit of extra um, glisten in there. Um, so there's a big bit here, there's some up here, there's little bits down here. 
it just gives you even more of that kind of organic feel, I think, to your alcoholic paste. And doesn't that piece just look amazing? Look at all those colors, nothing's gone muddy, everything's mixed together and played really nicely together on that piece. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Look at all those rainbows in there. I think it is stunning. So the other tip I should mention is I was working here on a piece of press and seal. And the reason I work on press and seal is because now, so there is a little bit of mess over the edges. And I am also working on my Tim Holtz glass mat because that also makes our clear up easy. But all my excess, I just do this. I screw it up and into the recycling trash it goes. And for me, that just makes my cleanup so much easier. Particularly now I'm doing a video. I don't have to worry about getting my alcohol ink or my card base or any of those things. It's super, super easy. You can die cut UPO too. So I could die cut the UPO itself directly. It's heat stable, so I could emboss onto it. There's all sorts of things I could do with it. So say we're gonna do this peekaboo technique. So I've taken one of the scrapbook.com flat cards. So these are perfect card front size pieces of cardstock you can get here at scrapbook.com. And I've already die cut it with the Barber Stripes die set from scrapbook.com. And I left this square piece in the middle already open um, and I didn't trim that off. So it's tabbed in and that means that I get this perfect square cutout that's already designed ready in the middle and I have that cutout ready to go. And I think I'm actually just gonna leave that in there because otherwise this center piece would be solid. But I really like how that cutout stays in the middle. It also comes with a hello cutout, but I decided to detab that and cut that piece out. So that's what my cutout looks like. And so the idea is that we're gonna peekaboo over the top like this. And I think this is gonna look absolutely awesome on our card base. And you can see, I'm gonna have a lot left over. And that's why I decided to do my whole piece of UPO because first of all, I can slide this along and go, okay, do I like this end best or do I like this end best? But I think I kind of like this end. Hmm. A typical thing, but I think I like this end best and then I'm going to trim so that I have this end that I can die cut later, I can um, use it on another card, I can use it on a card base, but I'm going to have another piece of background papers and I store all of these in an art bin in my craft room and then when I need a background paper or I need something to die cut or I want a pretty word, then I just go and grab something out of my background paper art bin and I already have all of these ready to go. So I'm going to grab my Tim Holtz trimmer. I keep my glass plates, um, my Gemini plates rather under here. So let's just check our width so we can measure this first. So it's four inches wide. So we're going to cut this four inches wide too. And I also want to make sure, of course, that I cut the end that I want to keep. I'm just going to put this in here. It's super easy to die cut too. And the reason I put it up against this bottom piece rather than the top is because as I bring my guillotine down, it's going to push my paper this way. And if it's on this bottom piece down here, my paper's got nowhere to go. Of course, it's just going to push it into that bottom grid even more and get a nice crisp cut. So this piece here is going to go into my background paper tray and I'm just going to keep that for later. I also have one of the scrapbook.com card bases already ready to go. And... I've already managed to pick up something off my surface over there. See, this is the joys of working in my craft room. So that's gonna be the front of my card because I'm going to cover it up. And I'm gonna use my Teflon bone folder here, one of my favorite tools. So I'm gonna center up my UPO panel. And when you're working with UPO, you do have to be careful what adhesive you use because um, it's acrylic, so not every adhesive is going to be acrylic friendly, but the Nuvo Tape Runner is acrylic friendly. And I am going to just take a little tiny slither off the edge of this because I don't want it to poke out the end. I'm in love with these colours, so much rainbow colours, and as I say, as long as you kind of dry between colours, you're going to find you don't get any of that muddiness, and that's one thing I love about working with alcoholics. So let's put some of our Nouveau Tape Runner on the back. Oops. And I always mat with my card base flat. 
So it means you've got a little bit more control over your card base too. Now again, when you stick this down, you're sticking it onto acrylic and alcohol. So we're gonna be using our Nuvo glue pen. What I like to do is take the wide one, use it like a highlighter. It dries clear, it's gonna go on blue, but it's gonna dry clear. And I just go all over. So we're gonna go over that barbershop panel, just like this. It just makes adhesion so easy. Move it to the side, flip this over. Just clean, simple, easy, I feel like easy breezy beautiful cover girl comes to mind. But it's looking amazing. And then when you go to stick it down, grab that same piece of kitchen roll, tacky side up, because you don't want to put extra tack onto your car but just give it a nice press down and then you're not going to get any tacky marks on your card. So isn't that coming together beautifully? Doesn't our card look amazing? And then I wanted a really clean and simple greeting and I couldn't find a word die I liked. I went through my stash, so it took me a while. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add this greeting. So this is a Sunny Studio, very clean and simple die from scrapbook.com and I'm going to pop this onto my piece. I'm just going to pop it down here. Same technique. This works really well with um, thin word dies. So again, the same. Kitchen towel. Use it just like a highlighter. And I cut this out of the black velvet cardstock from Scrapbook and Tonic Studios. Pop it down onto your project. Make sure it's nice and straight. Pull that down and then just take your kitchen towel, tacky side up and press it down to your project. Now the other thing is greetings has a dot over the eye. Now I don't know about you but I find it really hard to get my dots over my eyes. So what do I do? I take a Nouveau drop in the appropriate colour and that's how I add the dots to my eyes. No more sticking down little dots of any eyes. And so we have a beautiful card using that Barber Shop strip. Barber Stripes die set from LDRS. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I think it really shows off the die. It shows off your alcohol inks. So quick and simple, but absolutely beautiful. And you can use it on any occasion. Any colour scheme, I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed following along on that tutorial. I had so much fun making it. It came out exactly how I hoped, which isn't that fun when you have a card idea and it comes out exactly as you hoped to. Thank you so much for joining me here at scrapbook.com. Don't forget to check out all the links in the video description below. And join me again here soon at scrapbook.com. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for all of their amazing videos and free classes here at scrapbook.com. And give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's tutorial. We'll see you again very soon. Happy stamping everyone. Bye.